These seeds are then ground at high temperatures to extract the fragile oil, which is inevitably oxidized because of this hard. So you know how school children sometimes copy each other, but they copy the wrong answers. So the teacher knows that they copied each other because they all have the same wrong answers. These grifters are doing the exact same thing. Not only are they wrong, but they're all copying each other's wrong information. I'm going to put his video next to somebody that I already debunked making these exact same false claims. They're literally just copying each other's wrong answers at this point. These seeds are heated to extremely high temperatures, which causes the delicate polyunsaturated fats in these seeds to oxidize. I hear this claim so often, but it's just not true. So in the refining process, yes, these oils are heated to a temperature that drives off volatile compounds, which actually makes the oil more stable. This is why refined oils have higher smoke points. And that temperature is lower than the temperature that would be needed to oxidize the oil. The steam distillation process that drives off the unwanted aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, and short chain fatty acids. These are compounds which are more volatile than the oil itself. And again, this process actually makes the oil more stable so that it has a higher smoke point and it also has a longer shelf life. After this steam distillation process, the oil is then conditioned under nitrogen to prevent oxidation. This oil must then be washed with solvents like hexane, a known neurological toxin. Now these seeds are processed then with a petroleum-based solvent, such as hexane, which you know I'm not a fan of. All right, so hexane is used to extract the oil, and then the hexane is removed from the oil. This is a very efficient process that leaves very little to no hexane residue in the oil. Therefore, the resulting oil is not unsafe due to hexane, whether you are a fan of hexane or not. Then it must be processed with bleaching and deodorization so it doesn't smell rancid like it really is. After all of these steps, the canola oil is left oxidized, contaminated with solvents, and containing significant levels of trans fatty acids. No, the oil's not rancid at this point. That's not what the deodorization is for. This is what it's for. And the deodorization process produces trans fats. So things like clays can be used to adsorb flavor, color, and other impurities from the oil. Again, removing these impurities is making the oil more stable and the shelf life longer and making a more neutral oil that can be used in many different applications. That deodorization process can create low levels of trans fats. Per specifications, certain oils have to be below either 1.5% by weight of trans fat or below 1% by weight. And typically they're much lower than this. So this is what she cited for the trans fat claim, which actually has nothing to do with that deodorization process. It has to do with different uh, cooking methods. So this just showed after certain cooking methods, corn oil had 0.25 grams of trans fat per 100 grams, and the rest of these oils had no detectable amounts of trans fat. So not only is that not relevant to the claim being made, but it also shows very low levels of trans fats. And this oil is marketed to you as healthy by the American Heart Association. So that's pretty gross, but what is it really doing to our health? Let's take a look at the actual evidence on health impacts, which shows, among other things, a reduction in coronary heart disease when saturated fats are replaced by mono and polyunsaturated fats. I will link these and many more studies in the comments.